The term of the week, I would say the term of the year in Silicon Valley, it's been vibe coding. Vibe coding. Vibe coding is seriously a game changer. Vibe coding. What is vibe coding? This idea of vibe coding happened about three months ago. Can you actually make money with vibe coding? So you probably heard of the term vibe coding, which is building software applications using nothing but AI tools. Building software applications used to take a lot of knowledge, time and patience. Nowadays, with AI, you can build a software app in as fast as five minutes. But is it really as incredible as everyone is making it out to be? Well, personally, I'm not a software developer. I have zero coding knowledge, but I did dedicate around two months of my time in building an application that I'm hopeful will make some money in the next couple of months. So how was the experience? How much money did I make? And is AI really as mind blowing as all of these YouTubers are making it out to be? So I've built a link in bio tool called Flowstack. It's specifically built for creatives like musicians, DJs, photographers, videographers, content creators, really anybody who's just a creative. It allows users to build a one-page website, add their links, photos, videos, upcoming events, and a bunch of other stuff. So why did I build an app like this? Well, I'm a wedding photographer and I use tools like this on a daily basis, but somehow similar tools like for example Linktree or Komi just lack the features that I was specifically looking for. And you'll find a lot of online advice about this. Identify a problem, try and build a solution for this, and basically you're gonna make money. Sounds like overly simplified YouTube guru advice to me, but we'll put it to the test. Okay, so right now it's day one of building this project. I did a bit of research and Lovable seems to be the best AI tool to build this kind of stuff. And also I'm using ChatGPT to build that initial prompt that I'm gonna give to Lovable. So right now we've just input the prompt to Lovable and we're gonna hit the button. And basically, the AI is just gonna start doing its thing. Okay, so the thing with AI is that it's perfectly capable of building a working app. It builds the back end, the stuff that the user doesn't see, you know, like stuff like authentication, what happens when the user signs up, where does all that data go, how does that translate into the app, how does it get it working. So, all that back end stuff is perfectly capable of doing, but the front end, the stuff that the user sees, you know, like the logo, the windows, the animations, everything, it's pretty terrible at that. Everything that's front end, we're gonna have to design the logo, all the windows, um, all the elements, dialog boxes. Okay, so basically this is what I'm talking about. So Lovable just finished building like a prototype of the app. And as you can see, it looks pretty basic. I mean, the logo is just very bare bones. Nothing is actually usable. There's like a dark mode here because I told it to enable a dark mode and that works. Then you have publish button here, but there's no pages. There's no nothing. There's no sign in. There's no login. So everything we're going to have to build out. So I went into designing everything, the website, the dashboard, how the users published websites would look like every single window I designed either in Canva or Figma. Okay, so I pretty much mapped out like every single design piece that's part of the app. Um, and I did that in Figma. Now, if you're not familiar with Figma, it's a design tool. It's very, very easy to use. And as you can see here, we, we we pretty much mapped out everything like the sign up page. I wanted it to have this logo at the top. You have to do this because otherwise the if you don't give like a specific design to Lovable, it's going to start hallucinating and it's not going to give you the results that you want. So we have sign up pages, we have um, choose your username pages. I even um, created a design for a verification code. Also a bunch of other stuff that I didn't end up using. This was supposed to be the main dashboard, but I switched to something else because just Lovable couldn't handle it. Yeah, so this is what I mean when I say you have to design everything and some of the stuff I designed also in Canva. So here are all the elements that the users can place, you know, like links, media galleries, music, videos, all this stuff. Everything that's here is actually already now in our app. So you can see that it's using the same elements. Basically, you, you can just feed Lovable the screenshots and then it's going to try and replicate it uh, exactly as you designed it. It's usually pretty good at that. So um, as long as it has a reference image, it's, it's good to go. A lot of my building time was spent in the user's dashboard, which was basically the backbone of the entire app, the place where users would be able to add their links and all their content. I also wanted the users to have a live preview of the page that they were building. So I made a live phone 
preview in the dashboard that would update in real time as the users were building their websites. Getting this feature to work was easily one of the most problematic parts of the process. Each time I'd ask Lovable to implement the next feature, it would add it, but that would either break the app or break the phone preview. Then it would take me another 5-6 rounds of messages to fix the app and get it back to working properly. This went on for pretty much 2 weeks. Adding stuff, going back and fixing what it broke, adding that new stuff again, rinse and repeat. Okay, so to show you a little bit what I mean with the problems that I'm facing, so this is our dashboard, right? So we have the chat here for Lovable. On the left, this is where we put um, all our messages, we type everything that what we want the AI to change, and this is the actual preview for the app itself. Now, I have several problems with this right now. First of all, um, I added the option for users to change the background for their website. So th if they go here to the background settings, they can select a dark color. And it changes to the dark color, but it's also changing this menu down here, which is where the users are adding their products, their links, um, their videos, everything. So I don't want this to change to a black color. And I must have gone through like... 10 prompts for the AI and it simply cannot get it right. So sometimes Lovable is doing things very quickly where you just prompt a message, fix this, fix that, it does it. Other times with very simple stuff like this where you tell it, oh, don't change the background for this menu, it just doesn't know what to do. It does, doesn't know how to handle it. So it's very up and down. After about two to 300 more credits, my app was already in a working condition. The dashboard worked, the phone preview worked, users could upload pics, they could add links, they could add photos. The dashboard was working pretty much as intended. But the problem was I spent so much time building the backbone of the app that I completely neglected other crucial parts. Okay, so this is our login page and I enter my credentials. I sign in and now it just logs me out. And I've been trying to debug this, I think, since 9 p.m. There were about a million things to do and I was getting just completely overwhelmed. So I knew I had to get back to mapping out everything. Essentially create a flowchart so the AI understands the whole process behind the app. From sign up, to paying, to utilizing the app, to publishing the user's website. So after a couple more weeks of tinkering with the AI, it finally built a stable and workable app from beginning to end, but there were still critical problems with it. So the biggest, probably most important thing is that our app collects user data. So users provide their email address, their password. We store everything in Superbase, which is the database for our app. They also upload their photos, they upload their links, they upload videos, they upload their digital files. All of this is sensitive info. If Superbase is not functioning properly and we have warnings and security errors, then that's going to cause problems further down the line. Maybe not immediately, but if we get like 100 users or 200 users to sign up, the app is going to have stability problems and it's going to be subject to hacking. So it's best we get it out of the way right now. Okay, so I spent another three weeks trying to fix these security issues. You know, this is all new stuff to me. So even though you hear me talk about it very confidently, I actually learned about all this stuff in the past couple of months or two so after 326 dollars invested uh, must have been around 380 hours dedicated i now have a working app with a working dashboard so users can now sign up they can log in they can start adding their content they can log out they can be charged and everything is nice and secure so in case of the yearly subscription the user would pay three dollars per month whereas for the monthly subscription they would pay four dollars per month and even regarding the payment method you can go about it multiple ways so you can either charge everything up front you can include a free trial you can ask for a credit card in advance you can ask for a credit card after the seven days are over so basically asking for the credit card in advance a lot of startups do that and they're banking on the fact that you give your credit card details you try the app then you forget that your free trial is expiring and then you get charged for the first month but i didn't want to rely on this trick i wanted people to genuinely use my app try it if they don't like it they just don't give their credit card details and they can cancel their subscription okay so after the app itself is already sorted now it's time to think about the marketing sites 
so how would I market the app? Well, I basically chose four channels. So the first one, I would post the app on multiple subreddits like side projects, SaaS, I think there is even a vibe coding subreddit. Um, and I, I would post my app there, post it on Product Hunt, have people try it, gather some feedback. And then once I have all that feedback, I would push the rest of the marketing, which one would be that I need to create a Facebook and an Instagram page and push through meta ads. The other source would be I would try organic traffic with TikTok where I would film some commercials for the app, you know, maybe have users test it and put that up on TikTok to see how it runs organically. And the fourth one, which is actually my secret sauce, is um, because I'm a wedding industry vendor i have a lot of colleagues in the industry who most certainly would be glad to use this app for free they would start using it they would start posting about it on their socials it's basically free marketing for me it doesn't cost me anything they get free access to an app all they need is to post my app and basically promote it if they like it now the good thing with my app is that i don't have too high operating costs i basically pay $20 for Lovable to maintain the site and I pay $25 for Framer to use the landing page. So that means I have $45 per month of expenses. Now, if I have my app priced at $4 per month, that would mean I need only 11 users per month to break even. So yeah, now it's time to get at least those 11 users. I'm gonna push the marketing side of things. I'm gonna see how it goes. And then if I have updates of users signing up, getting any monthly recurring revenue, I can post an update. Or if you'd like to see weekly updates about this, please post a comment down below. If you'd like to see a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build an app like this, be sure to drop that in the comments too and I can make that video. Thank you so much for watching and on being with this journey with me. I can't wait to post more updates about this and hopefully we're gonna start making some money soon. Thank you and take care.